The book titled Balance of Power, Ramaphosa and the Future of South Africa. It's an account of political journalist Kanita Hunter of how Sora Ramaphosa rose to presidency. In the book, Kanita says in 2017, ANC Secretary General Ace Maheshule told her that it was at his Bloemfontein House in 2012 that the decision was taken to endorse Sora Ramaphosa for the ANC presidency. The author details how Ramaphosa's leveraged ascendancy to power undeliberately propelled him to the highest office in the country. It is a position that has also forced him into a constant balancing act which might cost the country dearly. Kanita Hunter joins us in studio to discuss her book. Good to have you. Welcome. Thank you very much for having me. Absolute pleasure. pleasure. Always watch you doing your reporting and follow you on social media and seeing you at all of these political events. And, and it's nice to finally get to chat to you and maybe find out a little bit about what happens behind the scenes. Because this is basically what this is all about, your book, is documenting this rise to the Ramaphosa presidency. What made you want to write a book about it? I think it's important to, you know, because the news in this country travels so fast, quickly and it's it, it's almost like a hysteria every day you don't know where politics will take us to the next moment and you know they say uh, you know a week is like a year but like a day is like a year in South African politics and so what I thought with this book is to step back and not write a biography about Sir Ramaphosa the president but but rather to document a period in South Africa's recent history that changed the trajectory of the country somewhat and really you know impacted the future of this country um, where the positively or negatively we, is yet to be seen but definitely um, this period of change the 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 lapse of the pres the the presidency of Jacob Zuma and the rise of Sir Ramaphosa really really was a turning point for South Africa and what I did was is to step back and see how everything was connected and you know to quote um, Minister Pravin Gordon to connect the dots yeah. in a way that 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 gives a reader some sort of insight beyond the headlines that we hear every day or the or the news stories that we read but but to really paint a picture of actually what was at stake um, what you know how people played cards and 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 you know how 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 important um, this time was um, uh, in South Africa's history and also giving us a glimpse into as you say the balance of power mm how it works you know we as a viewer people watch and they depend on the reporting of journalists they depend on the writing of journalists to give that balanced perspective to try and understand what is happening but it doesn't always help that it doesn't even work sometimes like that because you find that there may be bias in some reporting and some stories and you'll have a a, a, a politician spinning one story one way and another one spinning it that way and in between that is the truth and the idea is to actually find the truth and how this all played out and it's interesting to see how you 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 managed to sort of find out how this all played out that we landed up with Ramaphosa but take us back to the beginning because it was that interesting twist that you speak to about Ace Mahashule and him being mm. the one choosing or finding and speaking to Ramaphosa. Yeah, so I mean, there's there's almost this this space where Ramaphosa leaves politics and uh, active politics at least, and is in business. And then come 2012, he returns as deputy president of the ANC, and 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 that move it was important to go back to 2012 to say that it was actually engineered his return to active politics by the same people who are now his opponents. And that's the thing about politics; it's always in the nuance. It's always in the background maneuvering and Ace Mahashule, Zwilim Kize, these were people that were instrumental to find a deputy ca president candidate for Jacob Zuma when they were you know fighting against Khalima Mutlante in the 2012 elections and then fa fast forward five years later Ace Mahashule was dead set against Ramaphosa rising to the presidency so it was almost uh, politics of convenience at the time and that's why I tried to to explain in this book that you know these factions are never permanent enemies are never you know full-time people people it's always uh, a give and take it's always maneuvering and then I take you to the 2017 ANC conference in in, in Nasrec mm. where where the maneuvering was at a far accelerated space nothing we've seen before um, the type of horse trading um, you know in, the type of conversations that led to perhaps um, you know our current deputy president David Mabuse becoming de deputy president of the country. Yeah. So so people know about things like 
you know, it was a compromise or unity candidate. What did, so, so what I try to do now is to say, okay, what did it mean? Let's take you into a meeting at a hotel at the sidelines of the Nazareth conference where there was actual bartering to say, we will give you the support. Um, what did it mean? You know, the anecdote that Ramaphosa won the country but didn't win the ANC. Yeah. Um, he didn't have an overwhelming majority in the ANC and that worried his supporters. Um, you know, people reflecting on, on what went wrong with the campaign. But more than that, going forward, um, the removal of Jacob Zuma. There's a, there's a chapter I call uh, what, 15 days in February. Yes, the days. yes. Um, you know, we know the f famous eight days in September where former President Baker was removed. Yeah. But the 15 days in February 2018 was how Jacob Zuma was removed and also how he clung to power. Almost, uh, you know, what, what people may call, um, you know, like a despot, you know, clinging on to power until it was, it was, it was too late and he had to, he had to vacate office um, um, in, in 2018. So, so that kind of, of, of background information was important to me because that was a turning point and obviously that then gave rise to Ramaphosa's um, presidency. Yeah, I mean it, whichever side of the coin you sit on it, this is, it's fascinating it, it is difficult I suppose if you, um, you know you, you're looking at this, but when you actually understand what's happening behind the scenes and then you see the picture unfolding mm. it then makes it interesting. Nazrek you talk also about unity what unity? Mm. And I love that particular focus. I mean, you focus there on bringing this party together and we're so divided. Mm. I mean, there were literally just a few vote difference mm. between Nkosa Zanat Lamini Zuma and Cyril Ramaphosa. And then there was that, uh, that unity vote, which was David Mabuza, mm. our deputy president. You speak to that quite a lot as well. Talk us about how that all unfolded. Mm. So, I mean, uh, the, the, the character of David Mabuza plays an instrumental figure in documenting the story of Cyril Ramaphosa because many may pin Ramaphosa's ascension to this backroom maneuvering that David Mabuza did. So you can't separate the two as much as people like to. At the end of the day, um, David Mabuza was seen to be firmly on the side of Kosazana Lamini Zuma and it was a last minute changeover um, that then brought this unity candidate. And, and, and in the book, there's an interesting anecdote from, from someone very close to, to Mabuza who said, no one wants to be the deputy president of an opposing party. So that, that, that sort of gives um, um, a the you know an indication of the stakes that were at play at the time yeah, yeah. um but 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 more importantly Leon, i try to reflect on beyond that what what is mabuza's history what you know what was the run-up to nazareth looks like and since then you know he's 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 uh, volunteering to to remove himself as deputy president around the elections so there's a lot of that but one of my favorite um, anecdotes i think in the story was the 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 conceptualization of the genesis of the tuma mina speech that yeah. really kind of symbolized the early days of ramaphosa and it turns out that, you know, Ramaphosa was not keen on using Hugh Masekela's um, lyrics uh, uh, to Mamina in that, in that first state of the nation that really, you know, encapsulated and, and really gave rise to this Ramaphoria concept yes, that yes. he had in the beginning. And, and I, I basically went back to a speechwriter who thought at the time of conceptualizing, you know, the, 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 the to Mamina theme for the speech, that he was actually writing that state of the nation for, for Jacob Zuma. And then, you know, the events un overtook the speech. And, and, and Sol Ramaphosa, as um, advisors at the time, were really, really critical about this reference. And then when they saw the standing ovation that he received um, in the National Assembly that day, they were shocked themselves because, and, th and that effectively became the slogan of his, of his presidency. Absolutely. Tumamina and Ramaphosa are just, you know, hand in hand. Yeah, Ramaphoria, Tumamina, <laughs> the rise of Sura Ramaphosa. I mean, it's just, it, it, it's so interesting and I absolutely love Love how you've encapsulated the background of all of this. In fact, I was reading this on the beach on holiday. So you can imagine <laughs> the conversations that were being held and everybody's asking, so listen, what is the future of South Africa? I'm like, hang on, I'm not there yet. I'm not there yet. And neither are you because we're still hanging. We're still hanging. We're still watching this all unfolding. And, and it's a difficult time for President Ramaphosa. Um, this was a, a chaliced cup to begin with, to take on the presidency, because we are watching state capture commissions, we're watching court cases, we're watching battles between public protectors and presidents. We are seeing what happened yesterday, warrants of arrest issued for former mm -hmm. President Jacob Zuma. This is a very difficult time. Is Ramaphosa winning this presidency role that he's taken on? What do you think? 
I think that Ramaphosa had the luxury of having the benefit of the, being given the benefit of the doubt that without having him having had proven himself he was already given the sense of uh, of optimism by people you know far and wide to say he's the right man for the job so that was a luxury he had that no other president had and 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 as a result now people are, are starting to begin uh, to feel like he has squandered that 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 optimism or that 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 euphoria that engulfed the country at the time because of the tardiness and the slowness of his reaction but what the Ramaphosa um, administration his supporters those close to him those in his cabinet are saying is that the state was far more broken um, a, uh, than, than, than what we had deemed it to be so you know I, I give hints at you know how SARS was broken for example how the prosecuting authority was broken and that rebuilding it is a, is a, is a much more difficult task but the, but the reality of it is that Ramaphosa had come in and promised to be the new broom that sweeps clean. Yes, yes. And now people are sort of getting tired. And I think that um, the balancing act of, of or, or maybe he overcapitalized on the um, uh, uh, on the on the optimism that was around him, that he failed to understand that he w he, he probably won't be able to do as much as he promised to do because of this 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 waning political support he has within the ANZ. So every time he wants to act, whether it's ESCOM, whether it's SAA, um, you know, there was an ANZ Lekhotla recently. Whether it's you know the appointments um, of 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 a, of a new CEO, etc. Everything is, is, is counteracted and juxtaposed against his opponents within the ANC that are quite vocal as well and have, um, you know, a, 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 a large amount of support as well. So it's that constant balancing act and trapezing um, on issues that he can't, um, you know, decisively act because mm. he has to constantly consider this. So that's, for me, this book needs to empower South Africans to say, okay, this is how he got there. So let's use this information to judge him as he goes about. These were his priorities. These are the things he promised uh, South Africans. So these are, these are his long-standing views. So, so how do we use that to then um, judge his administration now um, as he continues now for the next four years? Yeah, it's, it is. It's a, it certainly is something. And I think our, 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 our one thing we do, however, need to still look to is that a lot of people are asking for a more aggressive stance. Mm. A lot of people are wanting to see more action. Yes, indeed, we have. We've seen changes to SOEs, SAA, El uh, ESCOM, we've mm. seen it. Um, we've, we've obviously seen the, the NPA heads changing. We've seen the Hawks. We've seen a whole bunch of things taking place, and yet nobody is behind bars. Mm. And I think that that's where people are losing faith. Mm. And, and it's a dangerous thing to happen to... A, a, a nation and a world because the world and we heard the views coming from the World Economic Forum Absolutely. saying that people thought he was a savior and he was almost coming in like another Mandela and I'm, I'm using that interview yeah. from Richard Quest but but the reality is it is not that way and it's not panning out that way but you know just on a final closing note what is the future of South Africa do we do we sit back and allow it to happen or do we continue on this vocal path of expecting more from our government I think that, uh, you know, former President Khaleem Bukhante said it best, where he said there's no messiahs, there's no messiah that can fix it all. And I think that that was probably the problem in the onset, that we believe one man can fix something that was broken so systematically over so many years. I think... And one man who was there while Absolutely. it was being broken. And one man that was there while it was broken. And I think that um, when it comes to the future of South Africa, it really lies between... Um, almost held hostage by the factionalism within the ANC and how the ruling party uh, will decide or whether it won't decide to actually put the country first. It was something that was not the case um, during um, the Zuma years and many may, may argue that, that it was the ANC that was put first and not the country during that era. And so now the future of the country lies in whether the party and Ramaphosa being part of that party, not away from that party, is able to put the country first um, and, and, and really, um, you know, make the difficult decisions. When it comes to issues like, you know, people get going behind bars, etc., I think there was an overestimation, and I think Ramaphosa was incorrect in, in creating this assertion that he could put people behind bars. As a president, you cannot arrest people. You don't have that power. Um, you, don't ha you cannot do that. And so, so putting Shamila Batoi there, um, and everyone then transferred that fate into Shamila Batoi, advocate um, 
Shamila Bato is the National Director of Public Prosecutions. And then it turns out a year later where, where you know, people in our office are saying that the NDPP herself can't put people behind bars. It's, it's you know, it's prosecutors, it's, it's a system that, that is effectively flawed and, and broken and now it's a matter of rebuilding. So, so, I mean, I don't know whether South Africans will have the patience to wait for this rebuilding project to unfold. We see to the SOEs, people are exhausted yeah. um, of, 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 of just having this hope and, uh, and, 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 you know, just this blind hope, really, that things will change for the better. And I do think that, you know, time is really uh, running out. Pleasure speaking to you, Nita Hunter. Balance of Power, Ramaphosa, and the Future of South Africa. The book is out in bookstores around the country. Uh, find out how the machine works behind the scenes. And that's where Panita takes us in her book. Panita, again, thank you very, very much. All right, I, I'm going to say goodbye, and I'm going to hand you over to 